Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, August 13th, 2012. Our top story is an update from the world of medicine, particularly stem cell research. A group at the Sanford Burnham Medical Research Institute have discovered a compound for making heart cells after searching for 15 years. As we've discussed on Brainstorm many times before, stem cells have a great medical and research potential, but with some challenges. One issue is getting stem cells, although generating induced pluripotent and other subtypes of stem cell is becoming more common. But another, equally important challenge is then safely converting the stem cells into the desired cell type. This is generally done with growth factors or other molecules that influence signals within the stem cell, and scientists have already produced many types in the lab. Now finally, we can produce human heart muscle cells, also known as cardiomyocytes, using a compound called IDT1. This was discovered by an advanced robotic system that set up and screened a large quantity of different drug-like molecules, looking for one that worked. IDT1 essentially works by blocking the receptor of a different growth factor that influences the stem cell to become something other than a heart cell. With this new capability, the first applications are drug testing and other research to better model how a heart would behave. But obviously, the ultimate goal is developing some kind of treatment for heart regeneration. Next is an interesting story from the world of neuroscience. A scientist at Duke University has been researching brain development by studying chimera birds that they created. Chimera is the technical term for an organism composed of cells from multiple species, in this case, the brain cells of one bird embryo being replaced with the same cells from a different species. In this latest research, it was frontal brain cells from a zebra finch embryo being transplanted into that of a Japanese quail, and it's the first chimera made with such distantly related species. However, it's by no means the first time bird chimeras like this have been created. The first such experiment was done in Yale University back in 1957. Another more similar experiment was done at McGill University in 1998, transplanting chicken brain cells into quail embryos. The resulting chimeras actually survived and demonstrated more chicken-like behaviors due to the transplanted brain cells. But back to the new chimeras, which are particularly interesting not only because the species aren't very closely related, but by how drastically different their brains usually develop. Zebra finches are songbirds, meaning their brains take longer to develop but end up larger and more sophisticated, because they essentially have to learn everything. Whereas the quail brain generally develops faster, but the end result is smaller, so successfully merging these two species of brain cells was quite an accomplishment. Well, success in that the finch cells successfully integrated into the bird's brain, but the chimeras didn't survive because the hybrid brain likely couldn't initiate breathing. Still, they were incubated for 16 days after the brain cell transplant, then studied with some interesting results. The finch cells grew faster than they would normally, meaning the signals for growth must have been coming from other parts of the embryo, as they more closely related to quail growth patterns. What these signals are and do isn't exactly known, as the research is still preliminary, but the experiments will continue. We end with a story from the world of nanotechnology as it applies to medicine. Research from Hong Kong Polytechnic University has produced cancer-fighting particles with the help of mushrooms. Cancer treatments are becoming more effective as our knowledge increases, but many current treatments, like chemotherapy, have drastic side effects. A major avenue of research is developing chemo and other drugs that specifically target cancer cells while not harming normal ones, to reduce the physical and emotional stress associated with treatment. To that end, research was done studying the anti-cancer effects of selenium, which is a trace mineral important for a healthy diet. Selenium was known to help boost the immune system, so the hope was that it could be incorporated into a less toxic drug. Sure enough, experiments showed that selenium nanoparticles were effective at killing cancer, with one catch. After a while, the selenium clumped together, forming bigger particles, thus preventing their absorption into cells and greatly reducing their effectiveness as a treatment. To prevent this, the selenium was combined with a polysaccharide protein complex from the mushroom, which is a molecule that's part protein and part sugar. This mushroom-enhanced nanoparticle didn't have the clumping issue and was extremely effective at killing breast cancer cells in the lab. The next step is animal testing, as well as more study of the exact mechanism behind the mushroom compound. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.